Hello and good morning Dublin. So yes, I'm Liz Rice and I work at Isovalent, which is the company that originally created the Cilium project. Do we have any Cilium users in the room? I can see a few hands. Okay. Cilium is built on a technology called eBPF and I'm here today to talk about why eBPF is a really great platform for building cloud native infrastructure tooling like observability, security and networking. These tools have been often deployed using a model called sidecars. That model's got us a long way, but eBPF opens up a whole new approach that I think is better in many circumstances. Before containers, we used library code to share common functionality across multiple applications. The library code that you wrote or that you imported from a third party had to be in the same language as your app. When we move our apps to Kubernetes, we put the apps into containers, the containers run in pods, and that gives us the opportunity to pull the common functionality out into a separate container that we inject into every pod and call a sidecar. This model has been widely used for logging and tracing and security and service mesh. So that's sidecars. How about eBPF? The acronym stands for Extended Berkeley Packet Filter, but honestly, the acronym is pretty much meaningless now because you can do so, so much more than packet filtering. What eBPF really means now is the ability to dynamically change the way the kernel behaves by loading custom programs into the kernel. It's a little bit like how JavaScript lets us change the way that a web, a web page behaves. Now, normally as app developers, we write code in user space and we don't normally think very much about the kernel. But every time our user space code, our application code wants to do anything that touches hardware like accessing a file or communicating over the network or allocating memory. All of these things require assistance from the kernel. And we normally don't think about it because it's abstracted away from using uh, higher level programming languages. But our applications are asking for that assistance from the kernel all the time. When we use eBPF, we can write programs, load them into the kernel, and attach them to events in the kernel. And whenever that event happens, the eBPF program runs. Those events could be any function call, any trace points, network packets arriving at certain points in the networking stack. All of these things can be used to trigger our custom eBPF programs. In a Kubernetes environment, our applications are running inside containers, inside pods, but all of the containers in all of the pods on any given node, on any given host, are sharing one kernel. And that means whenever our applications are, want to do anything interesting, that kernel on that virtual machine or bare metal machine is involved. The kernel is aware of everything that's happening in all of our applications on that Kubernetes node. So if we instrument that machine with eBPF and attach to the right events, we can build tooling that's aware of all of those applications. And we don't need to change anything about those applications or how they're configured for this tooling to work. So adding instrumentation using eBPF we only have to install one instance per host rather than one instance for every pod. And that is one of the reasons why eBPF is a really powerful platform for building tooling in a cloud native environment. For a sidecar container to interact or observe application containers, it has to run inside the same pod and share Linux namespaces with the application containers. And to get that sidecar into the pod, there has to be some YAML to configure it. And usually you don't manually write the YAML to inject sidecars. It's an automated process, maybe at admission control, as your pods are being deployed, the sidecar YAML gets added. 
Maybe it's done earlier in the CICD pipeline. But if something goes wrong, or maybe the pipeline is misconfigured, then if the sidecar container YAML doesn't get added, the sidecar container doesn't run, and your instrumentation is not going to be instrumenting that particular pod. In contrast with eBPF, we only have to instrument that node the one time. And as soon as we load eBPF programs into the kernel, they can start observing and interacting with all the processes that are already running. So you don't need to restart your pods, and there's no need to reconfigure them in any way for eBPF-based tooling to work. eBPF can see all of the activity on the node. So a malicious process is just as visible as regular processes. The sidecar model can also be pretty wasteful of resources. Every pod has to be configured to allow for the CPU and memory, not just of the application container, but also for the sidecar container. And there could be duplicate copies of configuration information, state information in every one of those instances of the sidecar. Pods are by design isolated from each other, so if those sidecar containers want to share information, the pods are only really supposed to communicate using network messages. So that's how you have to share information between sidecars. But with eBPF, we have a data structure called maps, uh, which allow us to communicate information between eBPF programs and between those programs in the kernel and any user space agent. So we can share information much more efficiently and use resources much more efficiently than the sidecar model. And there's lots of really powerful tooling that's already been built using eBPF. And I'm going to have a couple of examples from the CNCF landscape. One is an observability tool called Pixie. And this project uses eBPF to collect a whole variety of different metrics and present them to users in a graphical way, like this example of a flame graph that's showing CPU usage across a whole cluster. This example is Cilium's Hubble component, which uh, gives network observability. You can see individual packets flowing. You can see how Kubernetes services are communicating with each other. And you can see metrics at layer 7 and layer 4. Cilium is also using eBPF to provide networking capabilities. I mentioned before that eBPF programs can be attached to events in the networking stack. And Cilium can use this to bypass parts of that networking stack to deliver packets more efficiently. And as well as connectivity, Cilium is providing security based on eBPF with things like transparent encryption in the kernel and dropping packets if they're out of security policy. At the end of last year, we added additional capabilities to Cilium to make it a service mesh or make it service mesh enabled. And a service mesh provides connectivity between applications. It abstracts away the underlying network and provides extra features if the network doesn't already provide them, like observability and security and traffic management. But what was innovative about Cilium's approach to service mesh was that we built it without sidecars. All service meshes use a network proxy to handle and process traffic at layer 7, which is the application layer. And for a long while, other service mesh implementations like Istio and Linkerd have used the sidecar model to inject that proxy into every application pod. Cilium's implementation allows us to share a proxy across multiple pods. And avoiding the sidecar model uh, helps us to avoid the complexity and the resource usage that's often been associated with configuring that proxy in every pod. Also, combining the well, service mesh with eBPF also gives us a much more efficient networking path. In the sidecar model, a packet from the application has to traverse 
the network stack multiple times just to leave the pod. And then if we have two proxies, there's a, or two pods communicating, there's a proxy at either end, and the packet has to take that convoluted network path at both ends of that communication. Using eBPF, we can pass through a single proxy while making much more direct connections at either end to the application container. And this can have a really significant impact on latency. We know from Cilium beta testers, Cilium service mesh beta testers, that the operational complexity of configuring sidecars and the resource costs and the additional latency of those sidecar based service meshes had been too high a price to pay for some organizations to adopt service mesh. And now other service meshes are also recognizing the benefits of removing sidecars. Istio introduced a sidecarless option just last week. There are a few differences in the way that Cilium and Istio are approaching this, but we're both taking sidecars out of the equation and using an Envoy proxy to handle those complex layer seven parts. The quote there, sidecars have always been an unfortunate implementation detail. Mesh features will move to the underlying infrastructure. And that's really what we were asking ourselves in Cilium. Can we move service mesh entirely, not just into the underlying infrastructure, but into the kernel? Well, we haven't moved everything into the kernel, but we've moved a significant part using eBPF into the kernel and delegating responsibility to the Envoy proxy in user space to handle those complex layer seven processing. And that's a pattern that's been used before. For example, Suricata makes security decisions based on network packets sent to it by the kernel using NFQ. Or when you plug in a hardware device, the kernel calls to a user mode helper to deal with some of the complexities of configuration for the kernel module that's being loaded. In service mesh, there could be reasons that you still want to co-locate a proxy in your application pods. For example, if you've got an application that uses a complex custom WASM filter in its proxy for a particular application, you may want to isolate that proxy so that it can't affect other application pods. So I think we still see service meshes offering a menu of options for how you deploy that network proxy. But does eBPF mean the end of the sidecar model altogether? Well, eBPF programming is essentially kernel programming. So that does create quite a high barrier that stops people from just rewriting all of their tooling overnight in eBPF. Sidecars running in user space are really great for experimentation and innovation. Also, in some managed container environments, you don't always have access to the underlying virtual machine or bare metal machine. And in those cases, you may not be able to run eBPF-based tooling unless you have the cooperation of the cloud provider. But more broadly, I think we're going to see a lot of infrastructure tooling implemented in eBPF. And one of the reasons is this ability to avoid sidecars and improve performance. It's the improvements in performance that create the demand to implement more and more of the complexity within the kernel using eBPF. And because eBPF programs are loaded dynamically, we don't all have to run the same tooling and we can innovate in the kernel without requiring everyone to use the same custom programs. So the sidecar model does still have its place and we'll continue to see it used in some environments. But I believe eBPF has a huge role to play in the future of infrastructure tooling for observability, for security, and for networking. Thank you very much. <laughs>